Good morning and welcome to Unity of Edgewood this morning where love and light is your true nature and we're here to celebrate that and remember that together. Every Sunday we like to begin our time together remembering that we are one global family, that we are one human race, one life, sharing in one spirit. And so we affirm that with our statement of oneness which is printed in your bulletin and it's also on the screen. I invite you to share that with me together now. There is only one presence and one power active in my life and in the universe, God the good, omnipotence. And as it may be comfortable or convenient, I invite you to join your hands or join the hand of one near you as we open in that time of oneness. As their song said, it's time to expand beyond your philosophy. To recognize our divinity, our connectedness. We join together in recognizing that there is one God, one power, one presence, one life, one animating principle and presence that enlivens all of life. And so we begin to realize that everything that is, is an expression of all that is. And though we rise and reveal ourselves as a unique expression, completely contained and independent, we're never separated and disconnected. We still remain a part of the one human family. We still remain a part of life. And as long as we are breathing, our very breath is evidence of this one spirit breathing us. Today we open ourselves to this in a new and a playful way to help us remember what we already know but to help us live it every minute, demonstrate it and see it. That is the way that Jesus and the master teachers taught we create heaven on earth is living from that truth from the inside out. We open ourselves to this this day and give thanks for the sacred time of sharing, of giving and receiving. Thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. Thank you for being here today. All right, it's confession time. How many of you have ever been accused of being a geek? Stand up and be proud. Come on. Jim, stand up, Jim. All right, go ahead. Anybody else ever been accused of being a geek? Now, have any of you ever called anybody a geek? Now you stand up. Okay, and if you have no clue what a geek is, now you can stand up too. All right, you may be seated. Now you probably are familiar with the term geek, but I would imagine you don't know what it stands for because I made it up. <laughs> Actually, I received a heavenly download. <laughs> Geek is God, everywhere, everything, connected. <laughs> Say that with me. God, everywhere, everything, connected. It's that special kind of K. That's <laughs> the key thing. So do it one more time. God, everywhere, Everything. Connected. Give me the K one more time. Connected. You're almost there. One more time. God. Okay, okay. Let's start over. <laughs> God. Everywhere. Everything. Connected. Yeah, you got it. Connected. God. Everywhere. Everything. Connected. All right, so now locate your cell phone and hold that up. It's in your car, it's in your purse. You silenced it, hopefully. Okay, if it's not silenced, it's a good time to silence it. But let's hold all these cell phones, PDAs, all these things that we use up in the air and take a look around. Now, how many of you can remember your very first cell phone? It was probably like kind of this big bag thing that you sort of drug around with you. But they've gotten smaller and smaller and smaller and we can do more things with these. Keep your cell phone handy. Please do turn it on vibrate or stun or whatever you use. But keep it handy. You're going to program something in it today. 
But before we forget, what does geek stand for? God, everywhere, everything. <laughs> Will you write a song about that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> So you remember your first cell phone and cell phones came about those were one of the first things that helped all of us who are budding geeks Jim Skeeto on sound gave me the ultimate compliment one Sunday because he was telling me something and he said he said you may not understand and he said yeah you will because you're a bit of a geek too <laughs> when cell phones first came out this is a true story there was a a woman who grew up in the Midwest and she went to New York, went to school, graduated, got this big wig job in New York City and she, was, she got a cell phone. They were just brand new and loved being able to be connected and she just felt very important having this cell phone. So when she went home for Christmas back to the Midwest, her parents were aging and she, brought them a cell, she bought them a cell phone. And at that particular time, you know, cell phones weren't commonplace and her parents are like, what is this phone in this bag and why do we need it? So she explained to her parents, I can connect with you anytime. I want you to have this cell phone. She convinced them, keep the cell phone. Mom, keep it with you. And if I ever need to talk, you're here. I'm in New York. We can connect. So a couple of weeks later, mom and dad are out shopping and the daughter's back in New York. And while they're shopping, this phone starts ringing. And the husband looks at the wife and says, what in the world? And she said, oh, that's that phone our daughter gave us. We better answer it. So they dig the phone out of her purse and they answer it and they said, hello. And the daughter said, wonderful, you answered it. You know how to use your cell phone. I'm so glad that, you con that I can talk to you. She said, okay. She said, I am so surprised. How in the world did you know we were at Walmart? <laughs> you got that <laughs> if you didn't just stay with a little more coffee it'll come it'll it'll come I promise you the daughter said mom with this it doesn't matter where you are now listen to this I am connected to you wherever you are say that with me I am connected to you wherever you are now I want a pattern to emerge today that begins with geek. God, everywhere, everything connected. And now when we begin to use technology, starting with the cell phone, and the power of the cell phone is that message, I am connected to you wherever you are. And from cell phones, and, and actually before cell phones, were computers. How many of you remember your first experience with a computer or a computer terminal? Yeah, the first time I used a mouse, I really thought I had a problem. I was trying to use a mouse and the little pointer on the screen, it was my very first time. I thought I was physically dyslexic all of a sudden. It just would not, the thing was going everywhere. Can anyone else literally remember that? It wasn't that long ago. And thank God there aren't many children in the room. They would be looking at us like, what are you talking about? But for those of us that are 35 or older, you remember, we remember this, the advent of technology and computers. Well, our age, our, our error, if you will, is characterized as an error of information, of technology. Quite a contrast from the Stone Age, the Bronze Age, the Iron Age, Remember those previous errors of our human, our collective history, were defined and described by the material that we use to make our tools. And today, our error is described by, it's not so much what we use as tools, but it's what we use to connect. We truly today live in a time of connectivity. It's not so much about information as it is about accessibility. How do we have access to one another? How do we have access to information? How do we have access to this great web? And so technology uses words like that, like the web. We get out and we surf on the web. We have cyberspace. We've created this whole paradigm. And did you hear me when I said we have created? We, the human race, has created this technology that is mirroring back something to us that is very, very important. And we have the capacity to learn from what our creations are mirroring back to us.